Praise God from whom all blessings flow. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in this day. Uh, thank you, Reverend Ina Bloomfield, and all of you who have uh, tuned in from many different places in the world uh, to rejoice in the Lord, to hear a word from God, to be encouraged in the Lord. Uh, let us turn to the book of Judges, the book of Judges, chapter number six. Judges chapter number six, a very familiar passage of scripture. And I want to read it from the New International Version of the Bible, beginning with verse number one. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites because the power of Midian was so oppressive. The Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts caves and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other Eastern people invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel. Neither sheep nor cattle nor donkey. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. Hallelujah. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord, your God, do not worship the God of Amorites in whom land you live, but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came, sat down under the oak of Ophir. He belonged to Joash, the Abigail, where, the, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat, Lord have mercy, in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But the Lord is with, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all, the, all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned him, turned to him, said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? The, the scripture continues as verse number 15 says, pardon me. My, my Lord Gideon replied, but how can I say Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am my least am I and I am the least of my family. Sometimes we wonder, are we worthy of the call that God has on our lives? The Lord answered, I will be with you. God can reassure us that he will be with us and he gives us the victory. Getting replied, if now I found favor in your eye, give me a sign. Sometimes we have to see before we believe. Verse 18 says, please do not go away. 
until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Verse 19 said, Gideon went inside, prepared a young goat, and from an FO flour, he made bread without yeast, put in the meal in a basket and his broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. Verse number 20 says, the angel of God said to Take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on this rock, and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. Then the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread with the, with the tip of the staff that was in his hand. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Alas, sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not fear. You're not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day, it stands in Oprah of Abazizer. Let us pray. I pray that you would read the entire chapter. Eternal God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you uh, for an opportunity to share your word. We pray that they that have an ear will hear what the spirit of the Lord says. God, we will be careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse uh, number 12 of this uh, pericope, um, there's something that I want you um, to continue to meditate on. Verse number 12 and then in verse number 14 and 16. Verse number 12 says this. Uh, pardon me, my Lord, but the but if the Lord is with us, this verse 13, verse number 12, I'm sorry. When the angel of the Lord appeared to God, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. I want to use for a title today, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Verse number 14 says, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? I, I want to remind you that this verse speaks to all of us who are leaders, all of us who've been called, uh, all of us who have been anointed. Go in the strength you have. <laughs> And God will give you the victory. Remember, God is the one that is sending. I want you to remember this in verse number 16. The Lord answered, I will be with you. <laughs> I, want to rem I want to remind you that when you go in the Lord's name, when you do God's will, God's work, God will be with you. He tells Gideon, you will strike down your enemies. I just want to remind you of this, that when God with, is with you, he'll give you the victory. You can strike down your enemies. All of us are warriors for the Lord. Uh, Sometimes we have to embrace who God has called us to be. You are a mighty warrior. A warrior is a person engaged or experienced in warfare. A warrior is a soldier, a person who shows his or her great vigor, personal courage, aggressiveness, person engaged in some struggle. That's you or conflict. 
A warrior is a beloved son or daughter of God with a settled heart who is then trained and equipped to engage in the life and death battles that are continually going all around Noma, us and uh, that we can't seem to get away from. Being a warrior involves more than force. <laughs> it goes deeper. There's a deafness to it and intuitiveness and a gracefulness. Judges 6 describes a pattern of Israel's faithlessness and God's judgment. The chapter begins with Israel's apostasy, which leads to servitude, which leads them to be on the run for their lives in the midst of this oppression. It leaves them with a lack of resources and the inability to stand. But the Lord delivers Israel into the hands of Midian for seven years. The Midianites and their allies invade the land every year. The Israelites make dens in the mountains and caves and strongholds, and the Midianites and their allies devour the produce of the land. I want to remind you that in times like these, we got to trust God. Ongoing sin leads to ongoing oppression. God is, however, filled with mercy and grace when we cry out for help like the Israelites did. God uses then the lowly and the meek as his servant and true faith. Trust in God and his word. However, when there's unrepentant sin, it causes God to remove his head of protection. When there's defiance of God, for every moment we walk in defiance of God, we place ourselves outside the position to receive the blessing that he desires. For, for God will honor our request but he might delay it. But when we turn to God, God in Judges 6, 7 through 10 is filled with mercy and grace and he comes to our rescue. God's response to God's call. What is this? This is the angel of the Lord when it appears to Gideon. Gideon is called to God's service. The angel of the Lord gives Gideon an assign and calls him a mighty warrior. But then he later gives him a sign because Gideon does not completely trust himself, nor does he completely trust God. He reminds God that he is a person of low estate, and of one of the smallest clans or families. But God reminds him that he's with him. I came by remind, to remind you that God sees, God hears, God knows, and God is able to come see about it. God's response is to raise up a leader when his people are oppressed or to reveal to the people the person that he's already chosen. Hmm. This time it is Gideon. The Lord speaks to Gideon. The Lord says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. In other words, God sees Gideon's heart. He knows his mindset. And he knows Gideon's ability. When the Lord calls you, he knows all about you. He knows that there's hidden potential on the inside of you. He knows with his anointing, his power, his grace, 
his angels being encamped around you, that you can unleash the power that is within you. The, the, the chapter, the chapter tells the story of God calling in Gideon's life to deliver Israel from the Midianites. This account mirrors God's calling in Moses' life at the burning bush. And the initial failures of Moses' faith. Gideon is just like Moses. Like, like, like Moses, Gideon fail to trust God when he's called into service. Have you ever been there? You fail to trust God when he calls you? However, the angel of the Lord encourages Gideon that God has chosen him. He reminds Gideon, the Lord reminds Gideon, I am with you. When God is with you, the enemy cannot defeat you. When God is with you, he's greater than the whole world against you. When God is with you, you can go through your valley. You can climb mountains. You can overcome the obstacles. When there's doubt, and when there's fear lingering, when God is with you, he will reassure you and even show you a sign that he's with you. I just want to remind you today that, that, that God tells Gideon, do not be afraid. G Gideon builds an altar to the Lord. He, he sacrifices and he sees a sign, but it's not enough. At the end of the chapter, Gideon is asking for another sign. God uses his fleece as he asks, show him a sign. And then he asks for another sign. How many times does God have to show us a sign that he's with us? How many times does God have to call us before we answer. How many times does God have to encourage us before we step out on faith and do what God has called us to do? There are people all around us who are being pressed right now. And God has sent a prophet to tell us, just as in the text, that God is going to send us a leader, that God is going to send us what we need to get through our crisis, to overcome our obstacles, to live beyond our pain and our stress, to live beyond the oppression. God is saying help is on the way. And God is saying to those who he has anointed, those who he has called that you are a mighty warrior and that he will be with you and that he will deliver the enemy into your hand. I just want to encourage you to walk by faith and not by sight. I just want to encourage you to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. I just want to remind you that when you rely on God, hallelujah, he will see you through. All of the signs that God has shown you that his power is with you, all of the signs that God has shown you that he'll give you the victory, all of the signs that God has shown you that he will never leave you and, or forsake you. It's time to take your place. It's time to step out on faith. It's time to move forward. It's time to stand in the gap. It's time to come to the rescue and the release of your people. It's time to help those who are oppressed, those who have been abandoned and forsaken, those 
who are being misjudged and misused. It's time for you to be the warrior that God has called you to be. He spoke into the life of Gideon before Gideon began to fight, before Gideon began to lead. lead. God spoke into his life because God saw the greatness on the inside of him. You have greatness on the inside of you. You are a child of God. Don't live in fear. Don't allow the enemy to continue to oppress your people. Whatever community you live in, it's time to rise up. Whatever church you worship in, it's time, <clears throat> hallelujah, to rise up. Whatever ministry you are a part of, it's time to rise up. There's greatness on the inside of you. But you got to embrace what God has called you to do. And when you do, God will bless you beyond your doubt. God will bless you beyond your discouragement. God will bless you beyond your fear. God will bless you beyond those many enemies who sometimes come together to annihilate you or oppress you or steal from you or try to discourage you. I just came by to remind you that the Lord is with you and that you are a mighty warrior. Let me pray with you. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for the call upon our lives. Sometimes we're busy and we're sensitive to the things that are going on. But sometimes we don't understand that you're speaking to us or why you're speaking to us. But God, we're praying now that we will be strong and of good courage. We pray that we will walk by faith, that we will embrace the calling that is on our lives. We pray that we will stand in the gap. We pray to God, hallelujah, that we lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways that we acknowledge you so that you may direct our path. What you did for Gideon was you reminded him of who you were and how you had delivered Israel in the past. Remind your people, dear God, of who you are and how you delivered in the past. Remind your people that you're still with them, that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Remind your people of the promise that you will give victory. Remind your people, dear God, that when we trust you, we cannot fail. We thank you, we praise you, we love you. And we believe that the best is yet to come. So God, give us a mind to work. And God, strengthen our hands. And we pray that when you do, that we'll be strong and of good courage. That we will move forward and be more than conquerors as you have called us to be. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. It is in the name of Jesus we pray that we will serve willingly and that we will be bold in all that you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.